Hello everyone, and yeah, we're back with the final day of Island Raid for June of 2023, and let's go ahead and get an update. First off, MOB has managed to hold and take the level 8 for this one, so we are going to be taking the first position. There's still 24 hours for them for ND21 to try and take it if they feel so inclined. However, I do not believe they're going to be able to break us at this point. I just don't think there's enough gusto left in them to push for the level 8. HNZ has managed to take the level 7 over here from Sim. Sim did take two level 6s from F War. ND21 is well positioned to get second. X War having two level sixes and a level seven. And here, let's see. Level six, level seven. Let's see what the point rankings are right now for this island. We've got. Mob in first, X War in second with 8,000, ND21 in third, HNZ fourth. Sim, SKNJ, and F War rounding out the top eight. I am not sure if any of those rankings will change over time, but we shall see. If anything happens when this region, we will come back to check it later. Oh, hello, smoke alt. I swear, five minutes, less than five minutes in. If I didn't know any better, I'd think you were a stalker. But I digress. Let's check out the other regions. We've got G1, and I think we know how this one's going to go. But who ended up taking the level eight? We have HNB taking the level eight. Honestly, as expected. I think ANCS wasn't going to try and take him from them. There's definitely a better alliance there, a more established alliance. I'll be curious to see if ANCS can catch up to HNB with there being, you know, a time difference between the two alliances. Fox 1, Fox 0, KLGD, you got to admire the spirit at that point. They pushed as hard as they could to try and do something. Spec held back to their point. NWO just trying to say hi, I guess. Maybe they were coming over here to help as well. No, nope, they're building still. Wonder where they plan on going in the next 24 hours. Yes, we know Nakano is alive. They're not going to verify. They're not going to fix it until tomorrow. Well, seven three. So we're gonna have to stare at it and hope they actually hold up to their promise. But not a lot happening in G one. Heading back out. Let's go take a look at. G2, where there was a bit more spread on what was going on. We have AC18 taking the level 8. Still two alliances touching them, however at this point I believe PTW's alliance center is still sitting here. So BTW actually got pushed back out of their space, or they left it. Considering the amount of building fine did, they got pushed back. Which I know could not have been easy. We got Fox and BTW way the heck back here. Forty-two MP still touching them. 
but currently no combat. I'm doing well. I just enjoyed uh, spending the day with uh, my son for a bit of a birthday party. He's three, so he's not going to remember much of it, but took him to a little play place. Ven is down here touching their level six. Do they plan on taking it from them? Oh, this appears to be a trade. AC-18 is giving up their level 6 so that Ven can have a few more points and they're building around to make sure they don't lose their territory. Hot 9, 6, 7, still touching the 8. And you've got SOEP. That is a heck of a farming space up there. <laughs> This is ridiculous. At this point, I believe I'm going to have to change the settings on my. Oh, let's clear the Google cache first. And there we go. Yeah, kick it back out. G2 build. Uh, G2 had probably one of the more fair matchmaking so I can only imagine the combat in there was pretty intense G1 was a ANCS and HMB weren't going to fight amongst each other they could have wiped out anyone they wanted to and then I'm gonna hop into G3 here in a second and see how much damage Boone did Let's hop on over there. I swear since these updates I've been having issues keeping the game running. Don't know if it's my system or something in the emulator or in the game. As expected, Boone was the only one touching. No real fighting going on there. Duff has their building space up in the corner still. TBZ scattered around to take locations, RPG. Hey, they're not touching the ass end of RPG this time. So, they basically fought them off their ass. RCCO has got a 6 and a 7. Boone's got more than enough points. Honestly, they'll probably end up giving up the 6. D2B making sure they don't have zero points so they're ranked higher than RPG and it looks like Phoenix is going to get kicked out of their level six from the looks of it whether it be by TBZ or D2B is still up for debate at this point Yeah. RPG got bullied hard. I, I knew they would as soon as they got paired up with Boone. RPG wasn't going to have any or at the very least enough allies to be able to combat Boone. And they built a beeline straight to him. G3, pretty boring I imagine. But Combat's over there. Let's see how DBNP managed in Region 5. Did their push last night get them far enough to make it back to center? Or did they get held back? It does not look like they made it. Lost has taken the level 8 and they're building around. New D is also covering them to make sure that they don't have a chance to get it but it doesn't look like DBNP is going to push any more than this they got the seven they got the six they're not gonna be dead last they made the effort and they're not going to push their luck any further than that T 
TH-45 has their six and another six. Who's going to end up dead last in this one? Does everyone at least have their six? Wow. No one got... Oh, never mind. Here's the bullied person. And... Top one. Okay. Two people are going to end up dead last. But... Lost making friends with new D. Pushing back DB and P. I wish I could say I didn't expect it. You need more members when you're playing Island Raid. And while they had the power to be able to push, they didn't have the members to push. No doubt Captain is still extremely high ranked in kills. Along with Shy. And let's go ahead and see where we see them on the rank. Personnel. Yeah. Just under a billion kill points. Shy is half a billion. Fully expected from those two. When they're online, they're online together and they make a difference. But they can't do it alone in Island. It's hard to say um, because I don't think he's even up here. Let me check the rankings for that guy from Pear. Yeah, he's not in the top 50 in kills. So he didn't do a lot but his alliance is definitely going to win like there was no question about that hell if he wanted to they could have saved up this event to push to the level 8 and walked it across on the final day and I don't think anyone could have stopped him just because of him let's take a look Yeah. Walked in. No real issue there. No one wants to even get close. I thought there were more flags closer to them at the very least, so maybe they backed off that far just to make sure. It's like, no, well, I'm not going to be the closest one to this. Can't make me. can't make me do it. Let's see. Back to the shelter. Let's you said you were what? G11? How did you do? Y Big wallets. Big wallets will do that. PXL took over and nice friendly alliance just touching them as they pass to come down here to take the seven. Oh, sorry I got it backwards came up here to take the six from one in 3d so you've got one and two right here you took your six your seven and someone else's six and you'll probably get what third oh you have second place Oh, because of when you took it. Nice. Well done getting second place. Island Raid is ridiculous on, on even being able to place. <laughs> hey, whatever works. Whatever works. It still baffles me having such large spaces out in the open. I can only assume to boost gathering speed. But you can definitely tell the difference between offensive and defensive building. Like UWR does not want their level 7 taken. Getting a second. Vern is asking.
and that's the update on Island for those of you who are only wanting to watch this video for that. I will go ahead and make a short video giving update on the final results uh, after reset tomorrow. But I will not be streaming. I will be spending that time with my spouse because I've been sitting here streaming for an hour and a half a night for the last four days. <laughs> Gotta spend time with the family. Now for today, since I don't really have a lot going on, unless ND21 decides to make another push, I was, you all listen to me ramble on about different garrison choices and uh, how to boost Rigoro's shield, but someone was asking me earlier today about setting up a new series of analyzing Arena of Doom teams. And I just posted a video about it to my page today about wanting to set up that uh, set up that series. So if anyone watching this video would like their arena team looked at, analyzed, optimized to the best of my ability, just send me the information and I'd be happy to go over it in a video or if you don't want it to be publicly shown we can do it in discord or something like that and I'll just work on it bit by bit that being said just to give anyone watching an idea of how I analyze someone else's team let's analyze someone that lost to me and Here's a good start, because Madri uh, Madrakeeves should not be losing to me. There's a 3 million power difference here. Let's see what we can look at. First things first, I'm going to check out the stats. You see a hard focus in Ryder here, like a 30% gap. Great squad attack, great Ryder squad attack great rider squad defense and defense. This is definitely a rider focused person. So checking out gear, we have the pants and the boots. Yeah, went full bore into riders the same way I went into infantry. But based on the stats, they did it better. A lot better. They don't quite have T6 yet, but their tier 5 should be about 10 to 15 percent stronger than mine. So let's see what the issue is here. First things first, if you have a rider focus, you shouldn't be using the other damage type if you can avoid it. Now personally I like to use Lewis for a little bit of extra damage on Lee's team, but as you can see I still focus on the infantry. Chun has great buffs for skill damage, but when leading range squads only, she boosts skill damage. She's only yeah, she only has this at level one, so it's you're only losing a 7.5 percent increase to skill damage. There is nothing that says you cannot or that you can't use a range squad here, depending on the talents. Not not a range squad, a rider squad here. If you're focused into the skill tree with June, you can still run riders here. Or if you switch out June for Yeah, he doesn't have a Lee. If you switch out June for Lee, you can run riders without really taking much of a hit. So this is already problem area number one. Trying to get riders out of your squads. Because even if you maxed out the 30% range squad attack here, you're barely making up the difference. Barely. It's just not worth it. So, and that explains why Chun Lewis isn't getting any damage. The second problem is 
while you need to have a good focus in riders in arena when you're a rider commander you still need tanks even if they're bad ones and he's only got one once this falls there's not a lot of defense stopping me from mowing down everyone else oh yeah already awakened Elena absolutely worth it it's by far his strongest team if I face him in arena my goal is to take this out as quickly as possible once this is gone there's not a lot stopping me but I see three rider squads perfectly fine Fully Awakened's Catherine Cynthia is great. Having a Sven Freya in here, also good. You're still going to get Rider Squad Attack, Rider Squad Defense. You're going to have Freya's Enhanced Damage for, and AoE Damage. You've got a lot of good damage here, but they're not able to get it out because they're dying too quickly. So, my advice for this, right off the bat, remove Chun Lewis for another tank. And if you really want to help out your riders, I would split up Rigoro Adut, put Rigoro with Alex, which will give a. Here, I've got Alex on my team. Alex will give a nice Rider Squad HP buff to your entire team. And will also increase the defense of your two infantry teams. Rigoro Alex is amazing. It's probably one of the better units to use in non-infantry teams. And I say non-infantry because if you're using f a lot of infantry commanders, there can there's different ways you can finagle the team to have Alex on it and still get more out of your other infantry commanders. I personally use Rigoro Thunder just for staying power. He's not going to do a lot of damage. But it's hard to kill him. awesome glad you were able to hit a little bit higher than your weight belt oh wait wasn't done so definitely split up Rigoro put with Alex so you can get that rider squad buff and the infantry squad buff and if you have Tom great if not trying to figure out who you could put in here with and still get Lee to work in here but I don't know ooh that's an option depending on who you uh, how well Lee's built up you could run Lee Freya with riders Lee Freya with Riders would not be a horrible option. Would give you more damage than Sven is able to put out. You would lose out a bit on Rider Squad Attack, but it's replaced with Squad Attack from Lee. And if you're using Lee properly, he's not taking a lot of damage anyway, so you don't need the defensive buffs that Sven gives. So, you could put Lee in here for Sven, still run 99% Riders, go with a Rigoro Alex, and since you have a Dut wake Awakened, I would put a Dut with Thunder, or with Charlie. A Dut Charlie is surprisingly bulky, and good enough for a tank in a Rider team, because especially Awakened, 
she's going to reduce nearby ally squad's skill damage received for two seconds, about every six seconds. Gets a nice squad defense buff. And Charlie will make sure that activates more often. Charlie and Martin together is fine. If you're using full infantry, Charlie's infantry attack will boost Martin's damage and his heals and make them po uh, proc more often. So that is viable. It's not ideal, but it's viable. In my opinion, there's better pairs for Charlie and for Martin. Like, this right here is still the optimal pair for me. Like, your plan, as long as you plan to have Tom Martin be hit by something, I, when I use him, here, let's, let's see how he decided to hit me and we'll discuss that. Yeah, he has a tune coming directly at me, and Tom is going to heal off most of that damage. Yeah, breaks him down into the yellow. Jaden is not going to last, but I don't need him to. I need him to get off three or four buffs to give me an advantage that can't be made up. That is a great team. Tom Thunder is a lot of heals all at once. Just keep an eye out for how much it's healing. There is such a thing as overhealing here, and we discovered that with some of the reports we were seeing with uh, garrisons. Um, it's harder to tell with arena teams how much overhealing is overhealing, but if you watch the numbers and see how much it's healing for, like, see, here, I'm overhealing. Yeah, there was a plus one here. The only way Thunder would heal one troop is if there was no other lightly wounded troops to heal. Yeah, if they don't go after Rigoro Thunder, he can usually tank whatever's left. If they decide to go after him, they have to kill him quickly. That's in a video I mentioned uh earlier, anyone who goes after Rigoro Thunder and kills him before I've killed their fourth, their fifth, usually wins at that point. And here, as an example, that's exactly what happened here. I went 4v1 against his Rigoro, he went 4v1 against mine, and you'll watch mine die first. Because of how I've circled around, I've left my Adut and my Lee on this side to take the next hits. And he's going to kill mine just seconds before I kill him too. I just set up the new uh, video, the new Arena Series video as a premiere to load tomorrow. So I was curious of what that looked like. So if you're getting a reminder for it, it's probably for that. Um, I uploaded the video to Patreon earlier today, so it should be scheduled to come out at around 3 o'clock tomorrow. Well, 3 o'clock my time. It's currently 9 here, so in about 18 hours. But yeah, took out my Rigoro. There was not much I could do to hold him at that point. I'll get there, damn it. But yeah. Come on, let me load it. But yeah, for Madri uh, Madrikives, that's what he needs to do in order to make his team a bit better. Quick, see, make sure nothing's changed. I had somebody message me. Oh, yeah. ND21 was asking for a friendly fight, but I've gotten all the points that I need, and I'm saving up resources for uh, the upcoming top commander.
Okay. Sorry, trying to work out who was getting rankings because we had our allies upset that they were hearing that they were going to get fourth or fifth instead of third. So, was trying to get that cleared up. No, nope. back to arena. Simon has been hit and miss with me lately, and I haven't gotten much stronger. So let's see. Looks like he was testing some things. Is there anything different about this team than the other one? Martin Lee, Catherine, June, Tom. Yeah, he definitely. Yeah, he definitely switched up teams here, and this was left with twelve thousand troops with a lot of damage here. So one team was definitely better than the other. He was testing out which of his tanks was able to do better. This one, main problem, only one primary tank. Martin Edward cannot do enough healing with Martin's support tree and doesn't have enough defense to be able to maintain itself in combat. It just doesn't. Um, Catherine and Lee still carrying them in damage, but if the front line can't hold, the back line can't kill. It's that simple. This one has two dedicated tanks, which is why he actually had a lot more damage output from this one. So, let's analyze this one and see if we can make it just a little bit better. First things first, this is gross. Nakano is a buffer. Increases squad attack by 24% and should always be leading whatever team she's in because of this. She would boost anyone else's damage by a significant amount. Granted, she can't lead Chun. Because Chun's first skill is effectively halved for being the Vice General. And primarily because they want you to take the effect of this 1200 rage requirement or deal with half of her damage. One or the other. Now granted, this deals damage to two enemies in a straight line, even at, in the Vice General position, it's still 12,000 damage factor on split between two enemies, but she also needs to be a lead. Let's face it. So what can we do to make both of these leads, if need be? And. You could run Lewis with Chun, and no, oh, go back. You could run Lewis with Chun, and take this additional skill damage buff, because this 25% increase to skill damage is a bit more potent than just increasing your squad attack by 24%. However you still want to make sure you're within Lee's range of this debuff. So, there's a couple of options here. One, we remove Nakano entirely and put Lewis with Chun and put someone else with Lee. My option here is Charlie. And people may think this is weird, but the rage engine on Charlie is absolutely busted. His damage isn't anything to scoff at either. Hitting five enemies for 4,000 is ridiculously powerful for an epic, but this is what really makes him overpowered. Having that rage on Lee so that it pops off more often will ensure that Chun and Lewis both get the effect of his debuff consistently. It may not be all the time because he's going to be much faster at generating rage, but with Chun boosting Lewis's skill damage, each other's skill damage actually, keep using Charlie. I will keep using him until 
they make a commander that does what he does. I don't see it happening, but until they change that. With here, you could use Chun with Lewis, put Lee with Charlie, and not even have to change up this lineup. Tom, Martin, Rigoro, Alex, perfect. Leave them exactly as is. Catherine, Cynthia, again, just fine. As for his stats, he's ranged. So if you wanted to go ahead and take this commander out and replace it with Nakano and another commander, now even a Kemi might work. If you have an awakened Akemi, that's still going to be quite a bit of uh, AoE range damage you can abuse. But the point here is to maximize the amount of damage output from your ranged commanders, and he's got the ranged squad attack to do that. So, I'm thinking Nakano... Akemi down here for another range squad because despite popular belief you do not need all three types in in your arena team you don't Rigoro Alex perfectly fine you're going to get a massive range squad attack buff from that Tom Martin really love Tom's buffs and debuffs having it be to up to five squads in the area when it's awakened is really nice and then you've got Chun Lewis Lee Charlie the only issue with this is this puts one of them one of your range squads on the front line in order to pull this off and if you're going to do that I do believe Nakano Akemi is the most disposable and if you put Chun Lewis directly behind that, I believe they will still be able to take out whatever's in front of them. So, let's check formation just to make sure. Yeah, they went with Chun Li to go after my Rigoro, but as you can see, I'm still making great trades here. There's just not enough damage output. Jaden again going to fall I do plan on replacing Jaden once this new these new sets of commanders come out at the very least I'm going to put Robert in his place as soon as possible because I want to test the idea of putting shields on ally teams around me consistently because it is a shield for myself and a shield for an ally. So, kind of curious how that's going to work out. So, Chun Li still dealing. Uh, Li didn't take a lot of damage from my Rigoro because he wasn't directly targeted at any point, but. Lee Lewis doesn't have enough defense to be able to beat both of these at the same time. So yeah, just those quick changes and I would have absolutely no chance of beating him. I still use Jaden, so... Ha. <laughs> uh. Let's go ahead and hit on Detena for a little bit. Detena, I don't think, makes a lot of mistakes. But let's take a look, see what we got. There is an infantry squad focus. Not as potent as mine, but it's there. Gear's a bit more spread out than mine. Goes with a range squad attack, infantry squad defense as his highest one so far, and has avoided a 
a split between rider and range. So it looks as if he's leveling up everything fairly evenly with no regard to what he's upgrading first. And another big problem here, I can nitpick on this a little bit, chose the attack buffs first on all of them. When you're upgrading parts, infantry gets HP first. Because HP buffs are the hardest to come by, and infantry benefits greatly from having them. If you want to run attack buffs on range, perfectly fine. Rider squads, toss up. If you want to get a little bit more damage out of the skills, go with attack. But otherwise, you should be pumping HP. Like, I, the only reason I threw parts in any of these at all was for one TC event that I had extra parts for, and I wish I could take it back. But I have my infantry squad buffs. The only purple gear I have, is, the purple parts I have are in HP. And my HP buff is m much higher than his. So, he's got an infantry focus. He's got three infantry teams. Okay. Did max out the range squad attack, and there's less than a 30% gap. So, perfectly fine to use range there. If it was less than 30%, oh, sorry, if it was a more than a 30% gap, you should switch this to infantry, or whatever your troop is, whatever troop type is strongest for you. Because the point is to have this team deal as much damage, damage as possible. Freya, I believe, boosts Rider Squad attack enough to compensate for the loss there, so that's still fine. However, we don't need this one. So let's go back. Jade and Charlie works. It'll definitely get Jaden's uh, debuff up on a single target a lot faster. But, I think there's better uses for Charlie. And Jaden works, best, uh, works better with a heavy single target attacker. So, I do see, uh, uh, I do see Lee in here. I do see Alex, so he has the buff advantage, but since I run them both as well, you're compensating, you're just keeping up. His Martin's better than mine. He's got an awakened Tom. Rigoro is not awakened, which will hinder his counter dam his ability to use Rigoro the same way I do. Jaden's awakens. Still have a lot of people that haven't awakened Jaden. He's free. I don't see why people don't do that. Not a heavy spender, but that's fine. Went with the Rider Squad attack. But honestly, I don't see a lot actually wrong here. Personally, I would switch these two. Rigoro with Charlie and Jaden with Alex. And the reason I say that is <laughs> everyone starts off as a minnow. Everyone starts there. Okay, I've been playing this for almost a year now, so learned a thing or two. But I would pair Rigoro with Charlie just to make him a bit more uh, a bit more tanky. Rigoro's shield does a lot of absorption and if it's lined up with a lot of skills it can still break fairly easily. Charlie ensures that that shield goes back up quickly. Between Charlie's rage generation and Rigoro's rage generation it's about a five and a half to six second skill cycle if I'm correct. 
meaning that if they don't break the shield, he's absorbing just under 9600 damage factor for three turns, only for three turns later it to happen again. If they break it, then Charlie's then that means they're being attacked by more than enough enemies for Charlie to get the most out of his skills. When I was pairing Rigoro with Charlie before I got Thunder, I was getting quite a bit of damage out of Rigoro between counter damage and Charlie's ability. And putting Jaden with Alex makes Jaden a bit beefier, in my opinion. Having this little bit of heal, I think, helps Jaden more than it helps Rigoro. And if you're putting Rigoro on the front line where I put him, you're sacrificing Alex's abilities. Basically, you're planning on him being killed. I, I only do that because he's my th third highest tank. And in this case, he would be doing the same. But Rigoro is all... Ooh, let's see where he put him. Before I say that. Yeah, his Rigoro was out here by itself. That Alex is useless out here by itself. So, personally, put Jade, uh, put Alex with Jaden. Put Rigoro with Charlie. So that you're hitting all four of us with that Rage Generation. I don't know if it'd be enough to beat me, but it would be enough to m make a noticeable difference. Other than that, I don't see a lot actually wrong with the tennis team. Um, did I go over Gorgor Bay yet? Let's see. Go back to... What's up, Burn? Okay, let's look at one more, if I would remember to click the right buttons. Let's take a look at another arena team. Gorgor Bay, which I analyzed a bit in the video, but I'll in the video I made, but let's go ahead and analyze him directly here, because I focused more on my side of things. First glance, we've got one, two, three tanks. So, solid lineup. One ranged attacker that's well positioned, and one rider attacker that should be doing a lot more damage than this. Gathryn Cynthia is not weak, especially when paired together, so they should be doing a lot more damage than this. So, let's take a look at why. We've got an infantry focus better than mine but not because of gear infantry squad attack buffs have to be coming from his research which is better than mine and definitely went with the gold pants in order to get research speed perfectly understand that research sucks so we've got a minor Infantry focus. My defense is higher than his, but still about a 15% difference here. Infantry squad HP, still about 
a 14% increase there. 14 to 12. So he's got better stats. Going back to this, I now see why he couldn't beat me. And it's pretty clear why he couldn't beat me. He beat me in stats, in base stats. But I have both an Alex and a Lee. Meaning I'm controlling the stat boosts in this fight almost the entire time. So while he was beating me in every stat that counts, you only need to look at the infantry for mine. Yes, he has riders and ranged, but his rider and range don't beat my infantry. So he's fight his three infantry, sure, they're better than mine. But he had no he didn't have as good a damage as I did backing it up and he wasn't able to control what buffs or debuffs were happening on the field. Make sure there's no other issues here. Nope, he made good choices with his teams. The heroes themselves are very well built. Thunder's almost awakened and that's going to make a huge difference. Because Let's be honest, another 15% damage increase to three surrounding squads not including his own it doesn't even have to be him meaning he can buff his teammates if there's enough around and then it's not being wasted on himself Lewis isn't awakened but that's fine you've got a nice range squad attack buff personally I don't see why this one gets skipped over If I did my math right, this skill alone guarantees an 8 second skill cycle, which is 20% increased damage, because you're taking off 20% of the time required to cast the skill in the first place. It's not as much as the 30% skill damage buff, but range squad attack, the 30% buff does not translate to a 30% damage buff. It doesn't. If I had to guess at this level, it's likely a 10% buff to damage because of everything else that has to factor into it. That's why I usually save this one for last. Or at least I suggest people to save it for last because, let's be honest, I'm working with a 5111 Lewis. And I would be upgrading this Rage Recovery third. The other thing is, take Nakano out. Put Lee in. Even if it's just 5-1-1-1 Lee, it's going to do wonders in group combat for Lewis. To not only be able to debuff the enemy, but in my opinion it makes Lewis do more damage than Nakano's squad attack and various buffs. I just believe it does. As for getting Alex in this team, that's tricky. Because I really don't know what else I would switch out. The Rider team could go, but I don't know who else you would put in here other than maybe Jaden so that you could have Alex in the team. Lee Lewis running full uh running 99% ranged so that you get his uh third skills activation. Lee Lewis a dut thunder is just fine. Honestly, I'm still trying to test if a dut regoro would be viable for boosting regoro shields because I did learn that they're not based off of defense or HP, they're based off of attack. I don't know how I didn't notice it earlier because it is a damage factor. 
but there is a huge increase in damage absorbed by Rigoro's shield by pairing it with someone that gives him attack buffs. So that's going to need some testing, especially when the new heroes come out and there's more shields to play with. But I think Jade and Alex would do better than Catherine and Cynthia. Let's see why it didn't do any damage to begin with. Well, that explains that. Catherine Cynthia's... Yeah, okay, let's just skip that because that was a mess. We have Catherine, Adut, Tom, Rigoro. These three, perfectly fine on this row. Can do that. What is Catherine doing out there? She's getting absolutely melted by Jaden and Lee out here by herself. When she could be just, just put her behind a dut and let her do damage. I took out one of their primary damage dealers because they put it by themselves. Well, not existing anymore? So yeah, the formation is what really killed him here. Get Alex in the team, get Lee in the team, get Catherine behind cover, and you're golden. Maybe these people will watch this video and see it, maybe they won't, but I'm not going to say anything directly to them until they ask. Um, oh, there's one I want to look at, if I still have him. Nah, where is he? I'm going to hit him. He's usually within range. No. Thunder Adut gives Thunder a bit more damage as the battle progresses. I believe after about 20 seconds she has maxed out infantry attack and Thunder having his heals means that you're going to be looking at about 80 to 70 to 80 percent of your troops left after 20 seconds and doing an intense amount of damage. So, I see the use, but to me that's one of those well-rounded versus min-max teams. And if anyone's seen my arena videos on that, arena is about min-maxing. Making well-rounded individual units like that isn't going to beat min-maxed units. It's kind of my philosophy on that. Now, where are you shit at? Oh, you're way down here. There you are. All the way down in 41. I wanted to be able to hit you. Well, let's see who else I can look at. VIP made it all the way up here and was babied. This is, this, this is, mm, this is gross. 20 million power and you had to be babied up here in order to get it. So let's take a look. Well, I'm sorry, I saw a carry in the team at all. Bella being paired with Catherine when there are other commanders that work well. Rigoro Adut, I'm not going to say anything about that, but neither of them are level 60. Jaden Martin was a mistake I made early on thinking that the heals from Martin would compensate for Jaden's lack of defenses and Jaden's defense buff would boost Martin's um, attack and healing. Th no, it doesn't work. Yeah, that was the other thing. I'm sorry I didn't mention that. Lewis is not a lead. 
He's not. Lewis is a secondary commander that should be boosted by somebody else. So this whole range squad right here is painful to look at. Let's see what the stats are. Definitely not an infantry, but the rider and ranged aren't too far ahead of it and has me beat an overall squad attack. So they're doing better in their research overall, but they aren't focusing in anything this late in the game. You got a bit of a rider squad buff here. If anything, it's slightly in rider's favor. And they only have one rider team. Okay. Johnny's on the team and it's only 3 1 1 1. Oh, that hurts. Oh, anyways. Rigoro Adut even being on the front line and having a Dutz massive attack wasn't giving any kills. So likely a position issue there. If you're going to put a, put a Dutt with Rigoro, you can't use him as a counter tank anymore. So he can't be the one that's on the outside. Tom Thunder, wherever you put him, was correct. Yes, there wasn't a lot of kills done, but the healing is impressive. Yeah, that's from two fully awakened commanders. No, that's just one. Pairing Tom with his healing effect bonus on Thunder's healing. Yeah, it's a lot. You still run the risk of uh, overhealing, so likely he could have done more. But let's check out the positioning. Right front and center, perfectly fine. And was healing off... Yeah, was healing off a good chunk of the damage that was being dealt to him. But, because it's just paired with Tom, and Tom's the only skill damage coming out of it, I was n I was just wearing him down with a Dutt Charlie. And my Tom Martin was more than capable of healing anything that... any damage that Tom Thunder was able to give to him, so... That poor Lewis Carey. And the only reason that Bella Catherine was able to deal as much damage as she did is because she was the last to go down. But didn't even take out Rigoro Thunder. So, wasn't an issue of positioning. This is entirely an issue of formation. So, how do we make this better? First, get Martin out of Jaden's side and put it with Tom. Thunder can go with Rigoro just fine. If you don't want to put him with uh, Rigoro, since who's worse off as far as heroes? 5 4 1 1, 5 3 1 1. A good amount of investment in his. Tom and his Martin, so let's keep both of those in. Jaden is almost maxed out, so I'll, we'll have that 30% debuff. But, yeah, this has got to be overhauled. And picked the absolute worst skill to boost, so this needs to be 5411, and it needs to be Lee Lewis. That's a fairly simple fix. Bella, Catherine, they're both awakened, but I feel like there's better options for Bella, especially with Elena out now. And Elena was the roulette, so if you're going to be rider focused, you want Elena on the team. So, but Bella, Catherine will work for now. So you have Bella, Catherine, and Lee Lewis on back line. Front line will be. Tom Martin, obviously. 
really don't want to lose. Actually, no, there it is. Rigoro Thunder and Jaden Adut. Jaden will boost Adut's damage from her skills. Adut will boost Jaden's defense in return and keep him alive long enough to keep his debuff running. Only thing is, is that it's not going to be all infantry, which, let me double check that. Yeah, none of her say leading all only infantry squads. So she can run 99% infantry and be just fine. And since she's not the lead, the infantry guard talent doesn't hinder them in any way. And just to verify... Oh, no, I make these streams in order for people to ask questions, and hopefully I'll get more viewers when I start making these more scheduled, so that I can ask questions on the fly. Let's answer questions on the fly. Apologies. Um... As for the best hero squads on the field, it entirely depends on what troop type you prefer to uh, focus on and what your playstyle is. Because I'm not going to spend I'm not going to spend money to reset my talents all the time. So I need to make sure that I have infantry squads that can cover garrisons and can work in the field. So whenever I'm on garrison, I will run... Currently I'm the garrison captain here. And I will run Thunder first, Rigoro second. Because Thunder has talents set up for garrisons. Or at least more defensive playstyle. Rigoro, once I found out that attack power boosts his uh, shield as well, I put more of his points into the infantry tree, which is less effective for garrisons. So I'll run Rigoro Thunder in the field as a wall unit, and I'll run my Tom Martin behind him, or in some cases I'll hide Alex in with Tom in order to have that group buff if I know a lot of people are going to be with me. Um, best rider squad by far. Bella Elena. Find a target that, uh, find a weak target that other people are already hitting, and Bella Elena will completely wipe them out. As for ranged, I still see people use Chun Carry or Chun Lewis, um, and that's great. Just know that as soon as somebody sees a Chun on the field, Unless there is a Lee right next to it, Chun is going to die. People will target Chun's immediately. Bella Elena tends to stay on the field longer because she's a bit lower on the totem pole. You get rid of the debuffs and buffs first. Any Lees or Alexes you can find. Um, look for any Chun's that are able to do a lot of damage then it's kind of a toss-up as to whether or not you're going to go after Bella Elena or the people who bring epic commanders to group combat. Just so you can get them off the field. If someone's bringing a Liam or a Charlie like out in the open, people have gotten into the habit of using buffing commanders with those, so just eliminate them. Because I know I would advise in the earlier islands just to make sure Alex got onto the field. I would it's like put someone with Alex, get him out there, but hide Alex. But then people started realizing, oh, there's a Liam out here for some reason. Kill it. But yeah, best infantry squad. Um, Rigoro Thunder, um, Tom Martin are kind of up there. Bella Elena on Riders. Uh, Catherine Cynthia is still good if you have them awakened, but they kind of need to be awakened to keep up with Bella Elena. 
Lee Lewis and Chun Lewis for ranged. Hello, Paulo. First time chat. And if you're going to bring any buffers out onto the field, don't put them in the don't put them in the lead position. You can put Lee Lewis out there. Well, I'm I'm glad you can see me online. It's it's been a struggle to try and get this stream up and running properly, so I apologize if the graphics aren't as great. What we got here? Troops are based on what commanders you use. I'm asking what other heroes you See what I can switch in. Oh, we can go over this one together. How about that? This is one that someone left me earlier today. Um, there's a lot of information you can get from these, but unless you know what other heroes they're working with, it's harder to determine what changes you can make as far as switching in heroes and switching out. I'm working with the people that I showed you earlier in the stream. I know what heroes they have. I've either worked with them before or I know that they're high enough level to have these heroes. Like, we're in Region 6. You know... Oh, that's perfectly fine. I appreciate you sitting in the stream anyway. But no, the people in my region, Region 6, should have a good level or at least a good skill level on all of the early game heroes. Rigoro, Lee, um, Peter, Jaden, Hank. I kind of got a feel for what I'm working with. But this person here is way back in Region 134, so it's harder to tell. So I have to be careful on giving them any instructions based off of heroes that I don't know if they have. But what I can see here, they have a good Tom, a good Rigoro Tom here. If you don't have Martin, Rigoro Tom does work. You still need an off tank. And Edward Alex, I it can work but I don't think it's optimal. Honestly, I would prefer Liam Alex over Edward Alex. Charlie, uh, uh, Lee with Charlie, I want to leave that alone because that's going to be a lot of damage, a lot of debuffs, and can make up for a lot of problems in your team. And you're still so early game, it doesn't matter about focusing yet. Looks like this person focused infantry quite a bit, but it's not substantial enough to make a real difference yet. So, Rigoro Tom, 83,000. Problem number one. The um, so, And with this one, I'll get to explain my reasoning here. I think this should be ranged. Range squad attack and infantry squad attack is really close to each other. And I know that Charlie does have an infantry squad attack buff of 12%. However, let's see what the difference is in tier 4 ranged attack 178. Let's see if there's enough of a difference. Yeah. That's a pretty that's a pretty substantial difference. Infantry attack would need a buff of 20% just to catch up with ranged. And we're not giving it that. 
So Lee should be running in that team, Lee should be running ranged to get a bit more damage out of it. What else can we do here? You've got a level 50 Edward. I want to keep it in the team. So I guess what we will leave Edward with Alex for now. I want you to have another solid another solid damage team. And you don't really have that. Oh, oh god, that hurts. Um this is a problem. If you're planning on using Peter for any amount of time, I would suggest getting the skills reset and make this 5111. Um I don't like the idea of skill resetting a Peter that you're not going to use for much longer, but yeah. Anyways. Liam does have a nice squad attack buff, has heals. So if it was paired with someone who actually dealt a decent amount of damage, that would be fine. However, I think Peter would work best with Jaden in this case. Liam could go with Alex so that their heals stack up on top of each other. Because honestly, I think Liam's heals are more valuable than Edward's. Or at least I've seen them work more often than Edward's do. That leaves the question of what we're going to pair with Edward because I need to get Maxine off this team. We're at that point where Maxine should be switched off as soon as possible. Um, if you wanted to keep Edward with Alex, Jaden, and Peter, you could put Liam with just about any good damage dealer and that will definitely help. Uh, the likes of a Kemi or Freya at this stage in the game would work. Um, if you have Tom but not Lewis, you haven't gotten to that point yet. So, yeah, I'm looking at Freya or a Kemi. Yeah. Freya or Akemi, Jaden can run with Peter and they can double up on their um there's cars here. Okay. So get Jaden and Peter running mostly ranged troops to have a good attacking unit single target attacking unit in the back line. Lee Charlie will be an AoE attacking unit, again, mostly ranged. Edward Alex and then Lee Akemi or Lee Freya. Using the troop type that is dependent on that. If you're running Freya, use riders. Akemi, use ranged. Get these cars out of this team. So let's type that up. Edward Alex, Jaden, Peter, Lee, Charlie, and Liam, Akemi, or Liam, Freya, depending on who has better skills. Igoro. Edward, sorry, and Edward run infantry 
Lee and oh, Lee run Peter run ninety nine percent ranged and one percent in infantry and riders. Liam runs whatever is best for his partner. Riders for Freya. Ranged for Akemi. And there we go. Sadly, that does put Liam on the front line with whoever he gets paired with. However, I think that's the better option than putting Jaden Peter on the front line. And definitely don't want to have Lee Charlie on the front line. Oh, I wonder if they kicked... Oh, DBN. Never mind. So if you all want your arena teams analyzed like that, feel free to let me know. Let's see. I had somebody message in here. Want your team overanalyzed? I will. You know what? No, you said it. I'm going to have to look now. Where are you? Oh, you changed your name, didn't you? Says, mm. I will find you, damn it. I know you went over there, so just a matter of figuring out what you changed your name to, if you did, and if I'm just blind. Yeah, you changed your name. You suck. Oh, 
Oh well, I'll figure your team out later. How dare you hide from me. Oh no. Heading back out. Is there anyone left in arena I can analyze for tonight? This one was someone who was just taking the top 20 spot. Um, no face. Okay. Here's one I can analyze as well. This was a commanding defeat here. A Dut Charlie really carrying me as far as damage, so that's kind of nice. Let's check the stats. I do not have them beaten stats. I don't. Um, a bit of an infantry focus as well. Um, not as stark as mine. Like they've caught up in some of their other stats. Their equipment went with the supreme backpack cannot blame them for that at all and commando suit so I've got them beat in gear for the most part the hero choices is where I really have them beat though they still have a level 49 Peter and I understand wanting to keep that on the team but because you have it pretty well skilled up but Peter's just not worth it at this point. And running Nakano secondary is also not good. Wait, okay, he responded. Agreed. Change his name. No, it, oh, it's he's in Tani. That's why I wasn't seeing him. That's why. Let's take a look. Sorry to veer away from somebody else, but yes, there are people setting off fireworks days early. Where are you? Oh, come on, you're stronger than me. Where's your team? Here, I'll message directly so I'm not wasting the time. I was going to do this on stream.
Okay. With that, I'll just head back into the one I was looking at originally. No face. Okay. So, we have heroes. Rigoro Jin. Like, I can appreciate having a Jin at all. Like, that's a lot of... A lot of buffs. However, I would have maxed out that first skill. Six more rage per basic attack. And another 12% to attack and defense. Already good. And because of that, Jin tends to be a leader to boost someone else's damage. So, same issue here. Maya needs to be the leader for Peter in order to maximize his damage. And considering we see a ranged squad attack buff and Peter doesn't affect it, how much of a difference is there? Yeah, technically it's higher, so definitely want to have Maya leading, running 99% ranged. Tom Martin, perfectly fine. Um, Lee Lewis, also fine. With the ranged squad attack, definitely want to run 99% ranged and then 1% other things. I usually sit around 500 a piece, maybe 250, depending on uh, where I use them. But, yeah, definitely want to have mostly range on this team. Um, well, there's how we can get that. Okay, Alex goes with Rigoro. Le uh, Jin comes down here and leads Catherine. Still runs Riders. The 40% attack buff will greatly increase the damage of Catherine's uh, skills. Plus, paired with her rage generation, will keep Jin's attack and defense buffs up near constantly. 140 rage here. If it activates twice, that is almost three seconds off of uh, skill cycle. Plus, with Jin's, so long as it's more than five seconds. It's an uh, so long as it's more than four seconds, it's another second off of skill cycle, so we can get it down to at least six seconds. And that's a five second timer on this. So, uptime of five seconds, total skill cycle of six seconds means there's only one second that this um, buff isn't running. Wonderful. So yeah, that would yes, you have the level uh, the level difference. However, I believe the damage output will compensate for that. Rigoro will have Alex for buffing infantry. This team will do a lot better running Maya first. I would completely eliminate this team for someone else if I could. Tom Martin, perfectly fine. Lee Lewis. Uh, yeah, we need uh, Lee Lewis, and Jen Catherine. Let's check the formation. Peter on the outside, and if we watch, we'll see Catherine come around here. Lee held himself back in a corner, which means there's ways to make this faster for me if I can find a way to get Lee to come out this way. Catherine, poor Catherine. Just watching that bar melt. Tom Martin holding on for dear life. But before the timer expires, melt the last of Lee and fight's over. So yeah, 
definitely some major changes that can happen to No Face's team to really get more out of him. Meliodas. That was me just trying to move up the ranks. Ortezzi, same deal. And this was me simply seeing um, lowering my defense in order to uh, help people get to their top 20. I usually reset it after five days so that I can get enough coins to pay for everything. But as you can see, when just running Rigoro Thunder against five enemies that don't have a lot of power behind them, I do fairly well. It's 342,000 heals. 296,000 heals, and I still had squads left alive. Meliodas hitting me for rewards. Thumper couldn't beat me. Okay. Ah, here we go. Reports and when I finally win. Enjoying your weekend, I guess. A system in place to do that. Okay. Yeah, you should be up here. I think I set this Johnny team, but I do set Johnny's team. No, I didn't create Johnny's team, I created Junior's. My bad. But this isn't far off from what I would do. There's only a couple of changes I would make to either side. Um, trying to think. The only glaring problems that I see are a lack of Lee. June Lewis is not doing you any favors. They, them having an awakened Chun Lewis is definitely helping. The fact that you're able to beat Johnny, though, I can't. Yeah, that's... Yeah, if it's the Johnny I'm thinking of, yeah, it's this one.
Yeah, that's his team. I. feel better. I can't beat Johnny either. Let's see. I'll go ahead and share that and try and make it feel better. Because I think I tried it. No, I haven't tried it recently. Let's go ahead. Let's just hurt my feelings. I'm going to set up here. I want Jaden to try and affect them, and I definitely don't want that tune to come at an angle towards my team, so watch. You have a five one one three Elena or a five four no. Personally I'd change to Elena. But you're currently running, yeah, Catherine and Lena would work wonderfully. <laughs> I use Johnny and Naruto to test new formation ideas. They're close to me in strength. Yeah. As far as the report, I can f get through his Tom Martin eventually, but he's just got me in enough stats, and he does not play dumb. That Rigoro Alex is where it needs to be to affect all of his troops. He's running Catherine. I w Honestly, the only thing I would change here is maybe running Bella. Yeah. This time, he's been getting stronger and I've been holding in place. I used to be a lot closer to him. But I've been holding in place waiting for Top Commander to come up. This has been one of the rougher ones I've had. I'd pair maybe put Bella up here instead of Catherine, but that's the only thing I'd change. Lee being behind... It works for him. It's not a lot of damage, but it works, I guess. I'm hoping with me boosting a lot of stuff for the next top commander, I can make a bit of a difference again. That damage output is insane. I'm just <laughs>
I'm just happy I can keep top 20 with my 19 million. The two new ones are coming out. I don't know if you've had uh, Thunder Adut yet, but Eddie and Robert are coming out, and I am so excited for Eddie. And this skill, no matter how many times I look at it, it's busted. When a shield is broken or disappears, reduces the HP of up to three nearby enemy squads by 20%. And that's any time. From his active skill, from his uh, teammate's active skill. Um, if Robert set one on him and it, she and it disappears. And... I know it's not going to be additive or anything, it'll just reset the timer on it, but that's still going to be a lot of HP reduction from him, from anyone who runs Jonathan, um, anything, anyone who runs Robert, and of course Lee having that massive HP debuff. We were talking about that in one of the Discord channels I'm in. Um, reducing HP by somewhere up to 85%. Now granted, it still has to go against any HP buffs you already have, but you're still back under 100%. Even running... Even T6 teams have trouble getting over 200% in HP. So you're knocking down their... HP by a third at the very least. Main re uh, this is the only skill I would see being good for Robert because it's 20% chance so it's going to be likely every 6 seconds, every 6 or 7 seconds. Uh, range commander, so Nakano Lewis, which means Thunder Adut is after that. Something to look forward to. Let's see, actually, 80. I'm only going to be on for a few more minutes, and then I'll log off, but... Region 80, 117 days, yeah, you're looking at Nakano Lewis. Robert, <laughs> Robert is weird, he's technically an infantry commander, but they had him do so many different things, like, here's a 12-5 damage factor, which is higher than a lot of other commanders. You get 12,000 here, even buffed is 13, but and his doesn't get buffed, but it's still 12,5 and an HP reduction. So he's going to hit harder. He'll lead, reduce their HP, and then it'll be followed up with someone who does more damage again for quite a bit of damage. Infantry squad attack, 20%, which will boost the potency of the shields. A, and the 16% damage absorbed by the shield deflected and dealt to the enemy. This is an offensive and a defensive buff put together. Yeah, the damage is deflected, but it keeps him from being swarmed, so it's weakening the enemy without actually having to touch him. Using their own damage against them. A defensive skill, putting a shield on yourself and an ally squad of 2400. Then, for some unknown reason, counterattacks can set burns. It's it's a lot, and for that reason, people don't think he's going to do any job very well because he's trying to do too much at once. And his awakened skill, I'm. Increases burn damage dealt to squads inflicted with HP reduction by an additional 50%. So, in group combat, absolutely busted. Because 
anyone that's touching him is going to be burned. Because you can, if you can fo uh, force Robert onto a team that gets counterattacked and has that burn damage on him, Lee, with his AOE, yes, there are. There, uh, Hank is the only other one with burn damage. The thing I want to note here is that increase in damage. This it's six seconds per target. If he has eight people hitting him, he can set that burn on all of them. And if there's multiple Lees on the field, which there should be, it increases that damage on all of those targets at once. So there, I believe there's going to be ways you can manipulate that. It's just weird to give him burn damage at all. You could have just said, dealt regular damage of 3600 per second and then increased said passive damage on squads inflicted with HP reduction. I didn't I don't see a reason to make it a burn. But Eddie though. Decent shield, good damage. Infantry squad defense of 30%. This Increased squad counter damage is just a nice little bonus. This is awesome. This can put him on in the open field okay, but on garrisons is going to be really great. Counter rallies or just regular rallies to keep them from being swarmed by T6 players. I imagine there's going to be a lot of T6 players that pick him up just so that they can run rallies that don't get swarmed. And then having the infantry squad de defense buff here on top of an HP buff here means he has the highest single person buffs in their skills in the game so far. 60%. 40 is the closest I've seen. And then reducing HP 20% chance um, by 25% so Eddie does a lot of one thing trying to output damage in a, in a few different ways while giving himself a small shield but in reality that shield is just to reduce HP some more and I know that these two HP debuffs are going to stack because they come from different sources. When they all put I am happy to help there someday. Yeah, he's talking about we have one player who's been out of the game for so long. Right here, SKD Rokati. One of the bigger whales that was in our game like before we took our level 5. Before we made a president. And just quit. Just quit playing. Tried to buy an uh, tried to buy an account that ended up failing because of a scammer. They still played for like another month after that, and then just quit. So they've been in the top twenty. They've been slowly working them down, like they used to be top three. Just need to get them kicked out of this top twenty spot. But I've been on stream for two hours now. Uh, do you have any? F uh, Paulo, did you have any other questions that you wanted answered before I hop off here? If not, I'm going to hop off stream and get this video exported to YouTube tonight before I am done. If not, thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, if you want to see me go over more arena analysis, with your team or with another person's team, 
just you can send me a report of an alliance mate if you want to and I'll an analyze theirs as well I'll be happy to make a short YouTube video on it on how to make it better and hopefully you can pass that information on to your region to try and boost everyone's power all at once because everyone loves those great that's great carbon steels. Gotta have those. But with that, I'm going to hop off. It's a pleasure streaming with you all tonight. I will be working on setting up a set schedule starting next week alongside of a Discord channel for posting said set schedule. And give you all an opportunity to ask me in real time any questions you come up with. And also, in the meantime, I'm going to be working on how the freaking shield works. Being an infantry player, I want to know all of it. So, if you have any questions in the meantime, leave them in the comments. If you want to support me running these streams or have first look at any videos that I make, head on over to Patreon. I drop all of my videos over there 24 hours early. And with that... This is Mr. Brain, your friendly neighborhood gaming dad, signing off.